The sculpture I was interested in was late 19th century, early 20th century, um, the successionists in Austria. Um, people with a bit more, uh, they had a grounding in realism, but they were um, using it to, to make expressive art. And that's what I found in the, the Florence Academy of Art, a, a very rigorous, uh, methodical way of recreating the human figure in a realistic way, and a, a good grounding in anatomy and procedure and uh, technique. That was an important grounding for me because my, uh, my intention with sculpture ultimately was to do something quite uh, fantastical and surreal. So I thought the more realism there was behind that, the more uh, impressive the final pieces would be. It's Nebuchadnezzar, the king who, according to the Bible, goes mad um, and ends up eating grass in the field. I drew basically old men, people um, who looked a bit haggard and weathered and I used them as the basis for the, the face. The hollowed out eyes, um, it kind of creates a plaintive, melancholy feel, I think. I, I thought it was an interesting subject. This guy who was a very powerful king and then he was brought low. I think it's one of the interesting things about portraits that you can study them very closely. Um, you might see a, a beggar or, or a homeless person on, on the the street and they'd have an interesting weathered face but the last thing you want to do is look at them because you know god forbid you should make eye contact the minotaur is a fleeting walk-on appearance in, in that day's inferno so i kind of crowbarred him into that my first exhibition the bull idea of it is is wild uncontrolled um uh, anarchic and then you combine it with a man and there's something um a little bit tragic about it. He's obviously a misshapen, unnatural creature, so uh, you kind of feel pity as well as, as fear. So this is uh, Odysseus. He was the, the largest piece in my um, most recent exhibition. The, the Odyssey is the, the story of his journey home and the uh, characters that he encounters, the Cyclops and the Sirens and whatnot. And so uh, my, first, my first idea for Odysseus was a kind of uh, classical Greek hero Pericles type, um, highbrow, uh, very kind of intellectual uh, character because Odysseus is known to be cunning and um, sort of roguish looking character start started to come out um, as, I, as I developed it. And so I went with that because it, it, um, it seemed appropriate because he's, he's uh, this guy who's survived the war that killed Achilles. He's um, a guy who... Uh, all of, his, all of his crew die on the way back, but somehow he survives and um, he's, he's a kind of an ambiguous character. The, the, the Greeks thought, thought he was great, the Romans thought he was a, a scoundrel, so um, this is a portrait of a guy who's a bit of both. I typically would start with uh, a pen and a paper, just, just, just sketching, and uh, f first off, uh, trying to get the silhouette very strong and distinctive because that's the first thing you are going to see when you walk in the gallery. You're not going to see it up close, you're going to see it from uh, you know, 10 metres away or whatever. So I would get in a model and draw them from all different angles, like a schematic. It helps me to build the skeleton and then on that wooden frame, a malleable wire which supports the limbs of the, the sculpture and that's uh, clay applied and taken, taken off and reapplied and smoothened and roughed up again. More time is better, but uh, typically when you're making a sculptures for a show, you're, um, you're on a clock and you're, you're trying to get them done in time for your exhibition date, and you have to factor in the, the amount of time that the, the foundry will need to mold them, which is the next stage. So it just some of the waxes are, uh, they, when you touch them, they get, they get malleable, but this is this is har hardens quicker and uh, longer, so you need a hot blade to, to work on. And you're essentially pairing parts back and adding little dots of, dots of black wax to um, fill out the forms. Once this gets in the metal, it'll be very hard. It'll take a couple of guys to lift, but in wax, 
it's such a light material that um, you can um, work on it from every angle. When we lift the crucible of metal out, just prior to casting, there's a process called skimming. Because bronze is a combination of copper and tin, and over the period of the melting time, it develops what we call slag, and that needs to be skimmed off the metal to make sure it's clean before we pour it into the mold.